Welcome back to AM Agenda. With me here in the Canberra studio, Labor MP Andrew Lee. Good morning, Andrew. Morning, Karen. And in our Melbourne studio, we've got uh, Liberal front bench uh, Senator Mitch Firefield. Senator Firefield, thanks for your time. First, uh, first of all, to you, your um, you know f f uh, Victorian Liberal colleague uh, uh, Ted Bailey signed on. Very um, complimentary of this deal. Uh, Colin Barnett of WA has as well. Barry O'Farrell's holding out, but you'd have to think if Julia Gillard can win over the two Liberal premiers that there's a fair bit of pressure on Mr O'Farrell to toe the line if he indeed is successful in New South Wales. Well, Kieran, you've got to keep this uh, so-called deal in perspective. This is Labor's third uh, hospital reform deal in three years. In 2007, uh, we had Kevin Rudd say that if the states hadn't fixed the public hospital system uh, by 2009, that he'd take it over. Uh, he didn't do that. He didn't introduce legislation to uh, uh, give effect to a referendum. Um, we then had uh, the new concept of uh, the dominant funder, uh, the Commonwealth, taking that role. And I remember sitting in this studio in April last year uh, when that deal was announced and uh, those two magic words, dominant funder, uh, were meant to solve the public hospital system. Essentially what we had then was uh, a new accounting system uh, which was meant to fix our public hospitals. Well that all fell by the wayside. Nothing happened uh, between April and today. Uh, Julia Gillard has completely junked uh, the, the second uh, health plan of, uh, of Labor. We're now onto the third plan and uh, Julia Gillard's third plan is essentially to introduce a new post box. You take uh, the same uh, money, the same taxes from the same taxpayers, uh, you give it to the same hospitals, you just put it through a different post box uh, and that's meant to magically solve everything. Uh, at the moment uh, we don't have a deal, uh, we have a heads of agreement uh, and uh, we have no reason at all to think that uh, this will result in any reform, uh, in any improvement to patient outcomes, that it will be any better uh, than the previous two plans. Andrew Lee, the, the, the Prime Minister has had to back away, back down on a number of issues as Mitch said on the, the dominant funding position that the former Prime Minister had and on the clawback of GST. It's certainly a different uh, looking reform than what we had, uh, had seen last year. Well, Kieran, I think it's important with health not to get too caught up in the politics and personalities, the whole thing, and to focus on the substance. First of all, this is a big deal. $16 billion of new funding, 1,300 new hospital beds. I think that'll be welcomed by a lot of your viewers. But more importantly, it starts to deal with some of the substantive reform challenges in health. We've known two important things about uh, health care in, uh, in this country for a number of years. First of all is that Australians spend too much time in hospitals. So our reforms are partly about trying to improve primary health care, making sure GP services are better, and that patients aren't presenting in emergency rooms for things that a GP should have done. So part of our reforms are looking at that. The other is making sure that we've got the funding structure right, that we're actually paying hospitals in such a way that makes sure that they do the most with that money. That's what activity-based funding is. It's a really important reform, and it's critical that we don't undersell this uh, new independent health authority, which is going to do the pricing of that. Uh, it's new stuff, but it's critically important stuff for driving reforms in hospitals, making sure all Australian hospitals are learning from the way in which the best hospitals do things. The Prime Minister was elaborating on that point about the, the, the central funder and the, the, the local networks and how they would work together with that uh, in that interview she did with David Spears a little earlier this morning. Let's recap a bit more of what the Prime Minister had to say specifically in that area. The states will make agreements with local hospital networks about what will happen in those networks. So uh, you may agree with a local hospital network uh, that they're going to specialise in uh, knee operations and hip replacements, that in a major city uh, they're going to really focus on elective surgery and driving down waiting lists, making sure people are seen on time. Uh, then, of course, because we're funding activity through an efficient price, uh, we would step up to being partners in funding for all of that and we would all know where the money's gone and what it's gone for because of the funding body. Senator Fifield, this argument that the, the central pool of funds will help monitor, scrutinise where the money is going, doesn't that make sense in terms of, of, of transparency so at least people and... Uh, and patients know where the dollars are being spent? 
Well, it's hard to follow uh, with this government. Uh, the central pool was uh, was abandoned under Kevin Rudd because uh, it supposedly represented more bureaucracy. Uh, Julia Gillard previously said that the most important thing in hospital reform was that the Commonwealth is the dominant funder. Um, well, the Commonwealth isn't going to be the dominant funder in this system. Uh, the uh, unnecessary bureaucracy, uh, according to uh, Kevin Rudd, uh, is now the centrepiece uh, of this new um, uh, health funding agreement. It's just very hard to keep track of what Labor's key benchmarks are here. Uh, Kevin Rudd said that uh, he thought that a, uh, a system which was nationally funded uh, and locally run uh, was the right approach and, and we agree with those two principles and that's what we put forward at the last election was that we should have local hospital boards uh, and that we would look at having national funding. Now those two cr key criteria uh, which Kevin Rudd set as the benchmarks for a good uh, national hospital system have been junked by Julia Gillard. And uh, Andrew Lee, I'll, I'll, you can respond, but also the, the point that I think is uh, a valid one at this, at, at this stage is that it, it is just a heads of agreement. The final deal could well fall over. As you heard Barry O'Farrell uh, in uh, our interview earlier in the piece, he, he's making it very clear he's willing to junk the deal if he's not happy with the look of it when he, uh, as most people expect, takes office late March. Well, Kieran, I think you've got agreement on the fundamentals from the politicians and the public servants are going to sort out many of those details. Um, but look, let me come well, back Mitch, to some of the stuff that Mitch was saying. Mitch is, uh, Mitch is normally a substance guy, but this morning he seems very much caught up in he said, she said games. It's important to focus on the well, big reforms. That's all we have local, to go on. Local Nothing area has networks, happened. and so we have local communities making decisions, investment in preventive health care, so we make sure people don't come to hospitals and increase transparency. So we're going to have a My Hospitals website which mirrors the My Child website for childcare and the My Schools we uh, website for schools that ensures that Australians can find out how their local hospital is performing. And so Australians will be able to keep track of what's going on in this process, make sure that we're keeping up to stretch with our targets of reducing uh, elect uh, emergency wait times and reducing elective surgery wait times. Okay, They're the things that matter. Let's move on. I want to look at the Nielsen poll today. Uh, Labor's primary vote is 32 per cent, one point lower than it was at any time under Kevin Rudd. Uh, despite uh, what was a difficult week for Tony Abbott last week, it's not translated into increased support for the Prime Minister or the government. That's got to be a worry. Uh, well, Kieran, uh, when I was an academic at ANU, I uh, did a, qu worked on a range of topics, and one of them was looking at the predictive power of polls two years out for an election. Turns out that a poll two, year out, two years out from the election has absolutely no predictive power as who's going to win. That's actually true of a poll one year out, even six months out, polls are not particularly powerful. So you're just wasting your time. If, as a, a, as a politician, you think you can learn anything from day-to-day -day polls, it's much more important to focus on the reforms, activity-based funding, transparency, more doctors, more investment in the healthcare system, not to mention the big topic of rebuilding Queensland, which I hope we'll get a chance to talk, to, talk about this morning. Senator Fifield, can I ask you about uh, the, the poll, particularly in light of some of the internal tensions that have been around within the Liberal ranks? Do you think the fact that Tony Abbott is still in front, uh, the Coalition is still in front, uh, at least in terms of the, the polling numbers, that that might boost morale and try and smooth over some of the tensions? Well, you, you always prefer these sorts of uh, poll numbers to the alternative, um, and I certainly agree with, with Andy that uh, polls don't have a great predictive power. Um, what polls tell you is what people are thinking at the moment, uh, but you don't need um, polling uh, to tell you what we know from the field evidence as members and senators being out in the community, which is that people are very concerned about how this government wastes money, uh, that people are very concerned uh, that this government uh, won't have the, the appropriate mechanisms to spend the money for flood reconstruction well, uh, and that's part of our misgivings about uh, the flood levy um, and Labor's uh, inability to, uh, to fund that, uh, to fund the reconstruction without introducing a, a new tax. Um, but look, um, today the issue is health uh, and uh, the public will judge this government on whether they can actually introduce health reform. Uh, we've seen nothing over three years, uh, nothing has been achieved. Uh, we have a piece of paper today, uh, that is the only achievement of Julia Gillard is to get some signatures on a piece of paper uh, and the public will uh, pay on results. The um, other thing that the government wants to try and deliver in the, the short term is the flood levy. Andrew Lee, the Economics Committee is going to look at that starting, I think, this Wednesday, yep. uh, the flood levy inquiry. Um, are you confident that that can be wrapped up uh, and 
that those with concerns will be reassured. Certainly Tony Windsor's got some big concerns on the flood levy. Uh, well, Kieran, I think it's really important we get to work rebuilding Queensland, get some of those uh, bridges, roads, uh, essential infrastructure back in place. That's how we're going to ensure that the impact on the economy and the impact on people's lives is minimised. So we have to move uh, with a reasonable degree of pace uh, on, the, on this levy. The levy itself is fair. Uh, it's going to, uh, to be, be less than a dollar a week for 60% of taxpayers. Uh, for somebody on $80,000 a year, it's less than the price of a cup of coffee. So we're asking but, those but who the, earn a little bit to pay a, pay a little bit in order to the help levy, rebuild Queensland. Uh, uh, the the, the inquiry is not going to delay the passage of the levy if you can win the support of the cro crossbenchers, is it? So uh, the money can still flow. It's not going to stop the Our reconstruction. Our, our inquiry is due to report back next Monday, so, uh, so it will be reporting back on the, uh, the day that Parliament resumes. And we've done that because we recognise that uh, rebuilding Queensland is important. Uh, but I think what the inquiry is go going to conclude is what most Australians recognise, which is that uh, a modest flood levy is appropriate when Queensland and, uh, of course, Victoria are uh, hit with, uh, with the floods of, uh, of the magnitude that we've seen, some Senator, of this terrible devastation. Senator Firefield, um, the... Uh Independent or the Family First Senator Steve Fielding is going to back the levy as well. It uh, it turns out now. So, uh, and, and as Andrew said, the poll, the Nielsen poll shows more than 50% of people back the levy too. Have you back? Have you backed the wrong horse, the coalition on this? Well, we don't determine our positions on uh, on public policy matters uh, on the basis of polls. We do what we think is in the national interest, uh, and uh, we don't think it's in the national interest to impose a an additional income tax burden on Australians uh, who are doing it tough. Um, uh, those who haven't been directly and personally uh, impacted uh, by the floods uh, are still facing cost of living pressures. Uh, this government wants to add to those with a carbon tax. Uh, we don't think another tax should be added, so we're very happy to stand by our decision to oppose this new income tax hike. Senator Firefield, thanks for, for your time today. Andrew Lee, appreciate yours too. Great to see you both. Thanks, Karen. That's all for this thanks, edition Kieran. of AIM Agenda. Join Ashley Gill at 12.30 Eastern Daylight Time for Lunchtime Agenda. I'm Kieran Gilbert. Thanks for your company.